All right, guys, speed session. Let's see how fast we can do this. I realize a lot of the things on the channel and the live, the live was getting a little too slow, so I'm speeding it back up. Now, this means that I would be, I wouldn't be taking the time to write out each definition like that, but I will actually see the definition instead of writing it out. So, integrated science people, I looked at your syllabus, I'm trying to wonder how to teach integrated science because a lot of the stuff in integrated science I, I, I do already. I did it already. So, um, it's just in I do it for physics or I do it for chemistry or I do it for biology. <coughs> so, you may have to do some scanning through my channel for that. When my brother reaches back, I will try and get a little integrated science session going maybe later. But for now, you'll have to scan through the channel. Let's just get this physics. Let's get this physics bread. Now I will be speeding. I'll be speeding through this, just calling all the points. They will put the, de the, the definition in the chat and we go in. We go in and we go in fast, right? So I know integrated science people have integrated science. Tomorrow, uh, for somebody who's science based, kind of hard to understand. It's be hard to understand what, what people is find hard about integrated science. I know that, but I know people who do in business all the time and they just do integrated science and decide that that's you're not really accustomed to physics, chemistry, or biology, so it does it seems hard to you, right? So IT we do in IT tomorrow, Cohen oh gosh, I watch in your physics video. Saying so I don't think I go into the exam tomorrow. Alright, so how many subjects you teach? So no physics, physics, any physics. So no physics today. Physics, right? So physics, physics, physics. So let's get this. Let's get this bread. We'll be racing, people. So let's go. All right. So light rays and reflection. Um, I have a couple of textbooks. I have three textbooks open. I have the syllabus. So we can we can through that. Excuse. Me. Ray of light, <coughs> narrow beam of parallel light, which can be drawn as a single line on a diagram. Okay. Definition for ray of light. Narrow beam of light. <clears throat> narrow beam of light, you can draw it in a diagram. You need to know that it travels in straight lines. Straight lines. Now, there should be something you could do to demonstrate that light travels in straight lines. Make a single small one and choose you. Da, 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 da. How are we going to demonstrate light traveling um, straight lines? You need to make a small screen, pole. Next screen, pull, next screen. So in case this kind of experiment come, I would want to be able to do that. <clears throat> um, so you're setting this up, you're using retort, stand and clamp and whatever to set them up in the air. You want to pass a string through it and you will check and make sure the string level. Right? So like you can see this one need to come up. Right, you're passing a string through to make sure it's straight, make sure the string could pass you perfectly straight without anything, and then you want to shine a ray of light through it. <coughs> and you want to, your eye would be on this side, and um, the fact that you could see it going through there, that's one way to demonstrate that light travels in straight lines. Okay, so that is that. What are the stuff you need to know in the beginning here? You need to know this technique called ray tracing. Title wasn't changed. Yeah, I changed the title. So y'all not seen the title changed. <coughs> I'm gonna say poor things. So it's fine. I changed the title. The title should be speed session waves and optic C sec physics. Let me see what it is saying is the title here. The title was changed before the video started. Hmm. Infotech for C sec. Uh. Um, probably I need to refresh this. So, I'll get <coughs> this making me, um, kill my time here. I want to get through this as quickly as possible. So, we had the wrong people's, <coughs> we had the wrong title here, people. Zoop. So, that means some people who see the title must be saying, nah, this is not for me. And turn back. That sucks. Tell me if I see the title change. 
and we're going forward. Make sure and snap some Instagram stuff, right? <clears throat> so Ray of Light, the next thing I want to talk about here, retracing. So I'm doing this out the perspective, like if I was studying for the exam and I just got in through this to remember. What is retracing? This is a technique used to, let me see if this thing, uh, if this title switch. Right, so the title switch, refresh it, doing the title switch. By tracing the part of light, one can determine the type of image form. So this is this is a technique in optics. <clears throat> so these little small things in the definition is that I just make sure I had them down. Um, trace any part of light. So this is the same kind of thing. You have to remember that light travels in straight lines and it will have, it could change at different things. It could come from like the source, it could change. So like if you had the sun here or the light come at the source, you could have reflection taking place so you could have refraction. <coughs> refraction. <coughs> refraction. <coughs> Alright, so let's go into the shadows and eclipses. That's the next topic in this. Shadows and eclipses. Eclipse. So this is handwriting, handwriting. Only I tried my best with my handwriting here. So any any um problems? I will be looking at the chat freak infrequently as not as much as before. Um probably we should know we should know what the word opaque means. What does opaque means? Opaque. So that keyword there, opaque meaning light can't pass through. Opaque objects. Light cannot pass through opaque objects. Bam, good. Um, we, because light travels in straight lines, right? So it cannot pass through opaque objects. <coughs> so it's the formula sheet. So you know, it said IT when I was low key about to ignore it. Light cannot pass through. So I don't get no notification for the live. I cannot believe the title didn't switch. So you know what people must see? Um, I messed up there. So we're going forward, we're going forward. Um, so we need to know about opaque. We know that. Um, showing how the shadow form. Well, there's two types of shadow. There's the umbra and the penumbra. You already write the definition for umbra and penumbra. So the shadows. We have the shadows. And we have this split up into the umbra and the penumbra. What's the difference between umbra and penumbra? <clears throat> uh, we could do a little quick diagram to make sure we had that bag down. You have your light source here, you have your screen. So, how you're doing this is you're taking the top like this. I'm going to use a green. Taking the top, touch the top, go so. Take the top, touch the top, go so. And then you want to do a cross waist thing like this. And this section here will be pitch black dark. You see a circle on the screen here. And this section here will be kind of dark. You would see um, the pin number here. So, umber. And pin number. You all refresh it and tell me if the title change. And to make sure that the title change. Umber is the region of total darkness. Pin number is the region of partial darkness, right? Um, and that is it. So now we just need to learn eclipse, eclipse, eclipse. Three types of eclipse. Well, really two types, but um, the first type, you have the sun. Well, the sun will always be there, right? Um, maybe I should use this circle drawing thing here. Circle drawing thing here. That, pop. Sun. We have the moon. And we have the earth. So when the moon in between... There's a solar eclipse. There's a solar eclipse. So it is happening here. The rays of light from the sun. Zap. 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 And somewhere along here, people wouldn't get to see the sun because the moon in the way. And them getting an eclipse of the sun. So that's all we need to remember. We also should remember that all... Um, Yes, get the same P number effect too. Like some people get kind of partial eclipse, some people get a total eclipse, depending on where they are, where they are situated. Um, so they could probably access that. Like maybe they might write a letter here, A, write a letter there, B, and tell you which one is the partial, which one is the 
full eclipse, total eclipse. Uh, so that is it. That is it with this. So this is this one is the solar eclipse. There's something else called an annular eclipse. I could probably just mention the annular eclipse. This is like if this, if the moon is a little too far this way, the the lines and the lines here don't even get to touch and touch touch down on the air. They will kind of close off in the air here. So what you're going to see, what we're going to see is you will see the sun and you see the moon in front of the sun. So you will see a kind of ring, a ring of fire, kind of scene taking place there. That's an annular eclipse. You actually see the moon in front of the sun. In a total eclipse, in a total eclipse, the moon is going to be blocking off the whole sun. And in a partial eclipse, the moon kind of shifts upwards or downwards. So you ain't getting a full block. Right? So we know that. Um, now what, what is a lunar eclipse? Lunar eclipse. Eclipse. So the Atmat formula sheet. If that my best, that my beast teacher make. I got it. It is integrated science run through. Integrated sciences tomorrow. Y'all, I have integrated science in a lot of different videos. So you can kind of pick it through. But when my brother reach him, I'll see what I can do. Um, so lunar eclipse. Uh, what, what are we doing in lunar eclipse? Boy? In the lunar eclipse, you have, well, you have the sun, but this time the earth in the middle and the moon out here. So the sun actually going to leave a shadow on the on the moon. Alright, so uh, yeah, that's the lunar eclipse. When the sun casts a shadow on the moon. Yeah, so this part of the earth will be dark here because that is the night side because this is the side facing the sun. So you watching the moon now and all of a sudden you will see a little ring of the sun on the moon there. Bam! That is a lunar eclipse. Yeah, kinda kinda fiery yellow thing here so i think everybody should have that down we're ready for that if that come we know how to talk about everything there you also need to mention point sources and um like the type of shadows um from an extended source or a point source if it's a if it's like a point source you get sharp shadows right so like if 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 it's like this little dot making the light and you have a shadow you have a thing here you're gonna get a nice clean umbra all here that's pitch black dark but if it was a extended source like maybe a fluorescent um, thing and you put back the same thing here let me make it a little more extended you're actually gonna see a umbra and penumbra and all kind of thing taking place so you might get all right let me bring it back to where it was so you can take it to see umbra and penumbra taking place so you're getting an umbra and you're getting a big penumbra so that's good because we prefer this we don't want we don't want harsh shadows we want we want soft shadows so if you're using a extended source like um fluorescent light with the long tube or um what do you call it yeah, i think it's fluorescent with really the long tube that that wouldn't cast rough shadows but if you if you use point source like a a, a lamp you would see more shadows now so if you're that is that is something you must be able to talk about use the word extended source point source let me move forward in real life um the next thing i see in here next thing we have on the syllabus is probably to define talk about the pinhole camera yeah pinhole camera so what do you know about the pinhole camera um maybe this might come in a little experiment or something you have a box and you have a tiny little hole there and what would happen you have the object here the light is behind the object maybe maybe sunlight even and inside here the object will flip so let's like say the object was a lollipop the object will flip here bam and then the number one thing that will ask is if the image real or if it's upright or if it's um magnified three things is actually real upright magnified so you must be able to talk about that oh laterally inverted as well as the next one so now that i now that i see that 
let's write the properties of the image one time. We, we, are, we are to come back to this. Properties of images. What are the, the properties you could have? We could have the properties whether the virtual or real. We could have the property whether the magnified or same size, like whether it's undergoing a magnification or same size, whether it's upright, meaning if it vertically inverted and laterally inverted. Laterally inverted, this meaning like like when you're watching in a mirror and the next thing they could talk about which kind of ties into the magnified is the object distance is that equal to distance is that equal to the image distance in other words is the image as far behind the the, the, the mirror as the object right so they can talk about that in um, object distance is it equal to the image distance so when we start to talk more about lens and mirrors and reflection we need to examine images using these properties um, for sure for sure for sure something like this might come might for sure might come yeah so you must be able to talk about these things that 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 All right so let's go back to where we are at reflection remember kind of speeding tonight we, i will touch everything um so pinhole camera we will come back to that so the pinhole camera the images is flipped so it's and it, it's so it's not upright it's upside down and it is laterally inverted um and it is diminished so it undergoes negative magnification um scale and well so it's, it's the next thing is the next thing real real image can you touch it real image right all right, so let's go on. Somebody say so do bearings. <laughs> I'll read my uh, reflection of light. Reflection. So you're going straight into the reflection. So that's the first big topic here. Reflection. We mentioned we talk about the basics. Let me just take a quick recap. Like um, thing. We do the ray of light. What it is an arrow beam of light traveling straight lines. This is the experiment to prove that light travels in straight lines. Ray tracing. This is a technique in object tracing the part of light. Um, using straight lines, reflections could occur, refraction could occur, you're just tracing it, just using straight lines to trace the part of light, shadows and eclipse, you must know what an opaque object is, two styles in the shadow, the umbra, the penumbra, umbra, the Latin, there's a Latin word, total dark, shade, completely dark, penumbra, some light, you know, um, this is the umbra, penumbra, there, eclipse, this is a solar eclipse, um, the la this actually is the annular eclipse, the solar eclipse, it goes straight down. Lunar eclipse is when the Earth, in, so this is the Sun, the Earth, the Moon. Sam, <laughs> Sun, the Earth, the Moon, like the Earth in the path, and the Sun just make a little rim of brightness around the Moon here. If you can see it. And uh, the solar eclipse, the Moon gets in the way of the Sun, so it's blocking out the Sun. Alright, so, and then we do, we talk a little bit more about, um, this is a point source, this is an extended source of light and the types of shadows we get from them. We talk about the pinhole camera, we talk about the properties of images, and we're going into reflection now. Alright, so reflection. I can't slow down because it's right. Uh, because it's right before the exam. So let me see some wise in the chat if the pace is running good for you. If you if the pace is running good for you, if you really want me to slow down a little bit, if the pace, speed up, go faster, because I think I had to keep this pace to finish, try and finish this in probably one or two hours. Crunch time, right? Pace is running good? Nice. So, reflection of light. Um, nice. So, most people speed up. Man, say speed up. <laughs> reflection of light. Not all of the time you see in human eye. Light obeys the laws of refraction. Da, da, da. That. We use the ray box, so you know what you need to know when we're doing the experiment. Is something called a ray box we're using, right? Um, ting, ting, ting. Different type styles of beams. You could have a, you could have parallel beams of light. If it going away, there's diverging beams of light. If it coming together, um, coming together. All of this you could get from a ray box. There's converging 
beams of light. Okay, let's go straight into the laws of reflection. What are the laws of reflection? Two laws of reflection. One, two, will be the law of reflection. What are the two laws of reflection? One, two, ting a ting a ting 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 so this is, there's one law where say everything on the same plane and then the next law say I angle, angle of re, um, incidence equal to the angle of refraction, right? And then the next law saying I, R, N on the same plane. So this is why I would write in my notes, because I already have the definition memorized, but this is just a jog my memory. And now I will say the exact law. The first law, and people already write it, the first law of reflection states that the incident ray, I, the reflected ray, and the normal lie on the same plane. And the second law says the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of re 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 reflection. I'm going to say refraction. Did I say refraction any time here? All right, so... um. This is the, these are the laws, so we have that down there. Now to actually put it to work in some questions sooner or later. Um, well, you should know you should know what the what the normal and everything is. You have your your incident ray. This is a reflected ray. This line here, 90 degrees, would be a normal. This here is your mirror, and we normally denote this with some right. And here we have I, angle of incidence, and here we have R, angle of reflection. Everything on the same plane here. This is a normal. All right, so we have this long. normal incident ray, and this is the reflected ray. This is these are the angles here. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, to very if they access to do an experiment to verify the laws of reflection, you need to set it up. You need the ray box, and you need a protractor. And you need a plane mirror. So you put the mirror here and you set up this experiment using the ray box. You just put the ray box right here. Shoot out that ray. Let the ray come back so. And then you're taking your protractor. Now before you take your protractor, you have to take mark of an X there, mark of an X there, mark of an X there, mark of an X there. Now in Caribbean schools, we normally don't have no... I didn't have no ray box eh, in my days. So what we used to do was use pins. Some kind of bobby head pin or something. And you put that so and you put that so and you lined up so. Then you come on the next side and you watch the pencil and you stick it in so back back and you, then when you, you move everything and you, you connect the dots and you draw your ray diagram, right? Um, and then you take a protractor and measure the angle of incidence and it will show that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of um, reflection. Boom, bam, bing. All right, so we're going good. You have your mirror now. You have your mirror. And, and then you can have a bumpy mirror. So, if it's an irregular surface, what will happen? Well, kind of obvious. But just to talk about everything, because I want to talk about everything. A mirror with a smooth surface, you'll have parallel, parallel reflection taking place. So, everything picks up clean. In this one, if the surface bumpy, some might bounce so, some might go so and bounce so, you know. And the word you want to use, the word you want to use here is diffused, diffused, so you don't get a nice reflection. Right? Know that the normal rays are not parallel, so right? You get there, just compare what happens to parallel rays of light on different surfaces. So whether we have regular or diffused reflection, a mirror will have regular reflection. This is a kind of diffused reflection. Right, so your regular surface is produced. All it takes, you know what solemn right in there, smooth surface, spectacular, spectacular reflection. Um, solemn, your regular surface produces distorted images as you raise and are parallel to each other. Good. We talk about that, we touch on that. Those are like little small mark one things that can come. Um, they might ask you to complete, complete a ray diagram like this. But um, I think the, the more important thing they might ask is use a mirror and show how the image is, is set up and stuff like that. Let's go into that.
and a new image with that thing. So let's draw that diagram. We have the mirror. We have our object. Um, by the way, the thing in front of the mirror which is called the object. So behind the mirror, we call that the image, right? <coughs> now <coughs> we expect to see same distance, and then they will, they will, they may give you an eye here. Well, this is what they used to do in videos. I don't know if they're still doing this kind of thing. Um, well, this one is fine. The position of the image for my a mirror. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you want to find this position of the image for my plane mirror. So do factorize it. I like for it to touch on the atom. Yeah, because we speed into this and then we wrote the atom or something else afterwards. Understand that? This, this, there, this is to um, be able to find the position of this. You, in the end, you want to be able to find the position of the image. Image. So what you'll need to do is come here, watch this. You'll get the reflect, reflection taking place here. Whoop, bam. Then you come at the next spot. <coughs> when you do this, <coughs> what going on here with my throat? What will happen is that you'll 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 use the same needles thing and x x x x, and then you'll draw your diagram. Then you'll maybe position yourself in the next spot, and you'll get a similar thing taking place here. Let me kind of ratch my diagram to make it work. Right. Right, so and you make your little X's here, and then you come and you draw the rays after. And what you need to do is extend this, extend this now, and then extend this one. And where the two lines meet, <coughs> that's the image. So everybody know how to do that? Make sure you can describe this if this comes. <coughs> make sure you can describe that if that comes. Why is in the chat next if you're ready to move on? Now what what can we say about the image in a plane mirror? Image in a plane mirror. What can what points can we note about it? Well, <clears throat> is it virtual? Is it real? La 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 la. All the other stuff. It's not vertically mirrored. It's virtual, right? The rays of light never really go there, so it's laterally. <clears throat> inverted yes it's a fake image it's virtual it's not real it's virtual um it's upright um same distance from same distance from so the image distance equal object distance let me just write it like that the image is the same distance from the mirror as the object is image Distance is equal to object. Woo! The handwriting is the best in the world. Image distance is equal to object distance. Same size, yeah. Same size. Not magnified. Not magnified. Move on with your life. Next, next, next. So we're ready to go into refraction there already, boy. Let me see. Anything else? Any laws, any nothing like nothing? Oh, maybe we should explain what a real image is and what a virtual image is before we move on. Um, kind of know what happens in a periscope. Um, and that is about it. Day we can move on with your life. Right. Yeah, that's about it. So, um, 
please slow down for refraction. Yeah, I'm going to... Alright, so a virtual image... If you notice here, the rays of light are actually going through the mirror. You know? If you set up a mirror here, think of my calculator as the mirror. And ray of light coming towards the mirror. There's no actual you behind the mirror there. You know? There's no... That's just virtual. The rays of light do not actually touch the image. Now, if the rays of light... Right, so the rays of light only appear to reach the image, but they don't actually reach the image. Right? If the rays of light actually form the image, then that's a real image, like this pinhole camera here. Because the rays of light actually form in here, and when you're watching here now, you are actually seeing the ray of light touching there, right? So, real means the rays of light actually reach it, virtual means it fake the real it just it just appeared to, appears like if the ray of light went through and come there but it didn't rays of light do actually reach there so i feel with that we could move into maybe just ex examining what will happen with different types of mirrors um what type of mirror is this what type of mirror is that if we have parallel rays of light going at this mirror type is this this and if we have parallel rays of light going at this what will happen so you have your rays of light going like this the parallel what type of mirror is this by the way well this here is a concave and we should expect everybody to zoom in on us on a point here what we call this point what we call this point Um, dim, 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 dim. So everybody else, everybody will kind of zoom in on that point there. Back. That's how you get a reflection, right? And then you need to talk about where this would be used. There's now called the principal axis. Focus, focal, focal point or something. Yes, focal point. So this is concave. Uh, where, where would some examples of this be used? And then we have the convex lens here. If we have the parallel, whoop, 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 whoop. again, another divergence. Divergent thing going and take place here. Everybody will scatter some, some more. But they will also scatter based on a focal point too, you know. They'll scatter based on a focal point as well. I want hard to draw this. So, like, you can think of a focal point in the back here, and they're scattering. You understand that? Like if I was to extend it, they would come and touch something there. So, bab, bab. If you ain't drumming in the background, there's a Baptist church there. Them is, them is, them is good on real hard. Real hard. All one o'clock in the night and thing, them going on. Bap, bap, bap. Right. So, some examples of this. This would be in the satellite dish. Now, this is not lens, though. Eh? These are not lens. And we should concave or convex lens yet. This is these are mirrors. So all we talk about to correct long sightedness and all them kind of thing, we reach there yet. I've seen some people play now lens formula, we reach there yet either. So we use this concave uh, mirror or con the concave situation here for like a satellite dish and you see a high little receptor in the center here and so that's a common example for that one. The, the con or oh, we also use this in um headlights. Headlights. So like you have your light is be like this and you have a little concave thing there to help send all the light back. Uh where else we use this way? Whoa, 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 whoa. I never really seen anything for convex though. So fire on the convex mirrors. They, they'd say do a live on thermal physics? No, that coming after. All right, so let's go into let's go into refraction now. Let's go into refraction now. So refraction, what is refraction? What is refraction? We need to get a definition for refraction. The right any chat. What is refraction? And coincidentally, what is the angle of refraction? Um, 
So bandana light due to change in movement, bending of wave, bending of light. So bending, use the word bending. Bending of light. Light or any other EMR, any other electromagnetic radiation or anything. Or waves. Due to changing medium. So if we go from a more optically dense to due to change in medium. A more optically dense medium to a less optically dense thing, 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 bap, bap, bap. Refraction can happen with water waves as well. So you don't really want to use the word light if they actually refraction in terms of general thing. You might use the word bending of waves, right? So bending of light as a passage you want to use. So you don't just use the word light if they act a refraction in general. So you say bending of waves, example light, due to the change in medium as it passes from one trans material to the other or lag work angle of refraction angle of refraction is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal angle between refracted ray and normal and that's about it there um, I see. Okay, and what else, what else? We need to draw a little diagram here. Let's just examine what would happen. This is a block of, this is a... Oh, they are trying to draw a block. Maybe call that the block now. Um, let's make the ray of light come down like this. What would happen if this, if this is glass? Like if this is glass, and this is A, and this is back A again. So obviously the glasses are more optically dense medium. So what do you expect to happen? As it goes to the optically dense medium, will it bend towards the normal or away from the normal? Would it bend towards the normal or away from the normal? It would bend towards medium, towards the normal, bend towards the normal, right? So let's draw a little normal here in green, a small one. Let's make the normal go through. The, let's make the normal look good now. Yeah, boom, bam, big. Um, then you have, we'll bend a little bit towards the normal like this, right? So you could clearly see here that you had an angle of incidence I up here, and you have an angle of refraction R down here, right? And R is smaller than I in this case. The R gets squeezed up. If it was going, if it was going along the same route, it would have gone along like this. And this is then, you understand? Uh, and then would I just go straight? So, like, if it was mining its own business and it didn't bounce into that glass, we'd expect to see something going down like that. Oof. I could do this on there. I could. Always do this again. Make that space. So, make this thing. Uh, so, oh gosh, oh gosh, nice. Now, I want to fix this back. Science, that's so. Bring that back down to the current. So now, as it as it escaping now, it will continue back on its merry way. It will continue back heading like that. Right? Continue back heading like that. And I know I didn't really touch the end neighbor small thing. This is not this is not the exam or anything. We have a next normal taking place here. So we have a new incident ray taking place here and a new refracted ray taking place here. Now so from this diagram, you can use this diagram to memorize what happens in an optically as it going from less dense to optically dense, right? So as it, as the light leaves the uh, as it goes from a less dense to a more dense medium, it bends towards the normal, it also slows down. Yes, so when it slows down, it bends towards the normal. And as it leaves, the optically dense. So everybody, everybody's on on point. Let me see some wires in the chat if we're good with this. Um, it speeds up, so the angle of refraction speeds. Um, um, the angle of refraction gets wider. Yeah. Good with that. We can start to go into the into some equations and thing here. Why, 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 why? Oh, by the way, there's a, there's something here. 
a term here to explain the difference between like what happened here that that term what is that term lateral dis displacement right so just keep that in your back pocket in case they want they want things from your back pocket if you get them things from your back pocket lateral displacement lateral displacement um I feel like it really you know, we can move on into Snell's law so somebody write out why Snell's law okay Snell's law Snell's law um well let's do it like this the laws of refraction of refraction so we did the laws of reflection what we want now is the laws of reflect reflect refraction and the first law of refraction is that the i the r and the n all on the same plane right and i should raise up and see some snell's law there by now snell's law sine i over sine r constant all right good good so sine of the angle of incidence over the sine of the angle of refraction are equal to a constant from one transparent medium to the next. Sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to the refractive index so one me as like as we move from one medium to the next, one transparent medium to the other. Alright, so I can just put it like that. Now let's see definitions there. Make sure I write it out. We just have an a check point form because I speed it. So now you'll have to be able to do questions involving that. Um, we should also know that refractive index is equal to a whole heap of different things. Now we're coming back to do questions on this because understanding this is one thing and then doing questions is the next thing. Eh? So n is equal to sine i over sine r. Where some more things n is equal to? Some more things we can put n equal to. There are three things we can put n equal to. Four things. Somebody say v1 over v2, right? So that's the speed, the speed of the light. So let me just put that c1 over c2. Uh, and c here, I mean the speed, right? speed of the light All right what else wavelength over wavelength yeah but let me, let me leave that one out huh? so we just bring that. I'm pushing it we'll use the wavelength formula to pull line call mc squared one over sine c somebody said that one and one more Anybody see the other one, boy? And the next one is real depth. Right. Abdul. Abdul in the building. Real depth over apparent depth. So these are the, the four. Now I just want to keep you... Open up your back pocket and put that in there too. Pop, pop, pop. Nice. We had a down lock. Um, and I'm using C here to represent the speed of light. Everybody good at that? And now it's just diagrams and questions for refraction. Diagrams and questions. Yeah. No, no, no. We still need to talk about total internal reflection. Examples of total internal reflection. Uh, using the glass prism. And then we'll pull out the questions. Then we'll pull out the questions. So, um, oh, our next thing too, when you're using refractive index, you should know we use this the word N and you can say A to glass, right? A to glass or glass to A. So, you, sometimes they put A to G and thing on the two sides. So, get accustomed with that. How are you feeling about that so far? Alright, 
so here are we have to do um, people in the group chat just uh, people in the aid admins in the paid admins group chat just pull out some questions for me specifically and post it up here so I will tackle them questions I real sweat in my hot inside here um, so I'll tackle them questions when you come to it the live has been going on for 45 minutes we run through reflection and refraction we'll be finishing up refraction we're going to go into lenses then we're going to electromagnetic spectrum optical instruments and we will be done that might take an next hour so let's go um, the real depth to apparent depth thing, you have your eye like this. I'm an eye, on it. eye like this. What will happen? You have the ray line coming like this. Just understand how to draw this diagram. If it if it went, may use straight lines, I may use a better eye. Just in case this diagram pop up on me now. Buddy. I'm more bulgy here, so we get a good we get a good thing here going. But The green line is what you're appearing to see. But what really happening, so you feeling like the object here, you feeling like the fish here. So that is that is that is the fish there, right? You feeling like he here, but that is not him there. No. The fish really a little lower. The fish really here, so and and that's how it's be. So because and why is that happening? You gain some refraction taking place from this point here. You had some refraction taking place. So this is a real ray of light. I don't know why this line don't want to stick on. Where I want to stick on? Pop. Well, that the you can stick on to the dot. So, so everybody understand that? Somebody <laughs> add the fish, right? <laughs> so this is what really going on here. You have. And this here is called your apparent depth. Because this is a fake fish. You know? This is not the fish. This is the real fish down here. Real fish. They the real fish. They are fake fish here. So this is the apparent depth. And this going down quite here is the real depth. And if you are the refractive index, you know what to do. Bam. Real depth over apparent depth. You're good to go there. Um... You can also get this diagram not from overhead but from the side. Same thing going to take place. Let's let's try to do this diagram from the side. I'm gonna try and use black the same colors, black and black, um, orange, green, whatever. We go, we can see. So you have your your water level here. You have your oh, what drawing straight lines, boy? Hey, right? No. Forget that. So you have your eye coming on this side here. Let me make this eye look good. Um, and once again, you put the green line to represent where you think you're really seeing. You think you're seeing the fish here, you know? If I just use one line for the eye. You think you're seeing the fish here? You think you're seeing the fish there, but he's not really there. He's not really there. The fish is about here, so because it's a refraction taking place and to top it off you can actually draw some normals here and get things done I think this is the refracted no this is the incident keep in mind the light don't go this direction eh? the light going towards your eye your light don't make eye, <laughs> your eye don't make light to see anything I do accept light so this is what happening but because the light refracted here, you f your eyes thinking that you see the fish here. So there is the fish, there is the fish cousin, fish cousin black. All right. So once again, same same scenario. Apparent depth, real real depth. We good with that. Some some next in the chat there. This is just a little quick sketching, making sure you know how to draw these diagrams. Um, this is how I revise this. By the way, this is refractive ray. This is the incident ray. I get, I get, I just showing you how hard it's speed revise this, and hopefully you will be speed revising it too, and going through other stuff in while while we studying this to make sure you're cooking with rapco gas. Um, 
all of these things very very similar. We could probably we could probably enter it. Okay, let's talk about total internal reflection. A man spelling next. A man take this spelling and next a new level there by ne ne x. Hmm. Now only we just stick with next here. We just stick with next out here, partner. Right? Total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. What is that about? Well, sometimes when the refraction starts to overdo it, let me just explain this quickly. Total internal reflection is when you refraction, refraction get out of hand. So it happens in the uh, our clean page, clean page, brother. And I, I know somebody probably put a whole definition for that. No, no, what going on with you, boy? Give you the definition. Uh, all right, give you the definition of critical angle in the meanwhile while I said drop this. What's the definition for the critical angle? So what's happening here? Let's me just let's me draw the normal. That's our normal. And we're going from dense to less dense, right? Hopefully that is what gonna happen to you tonight too. <laughs> You will go from dense to less dense, so you're going to experience refraction tonight, right? Um, yeah, so this is the more dense thing, like maybe glass, and this is the air, right? Um, Alright, so if the light come in like this, so people learn through the critical angle definition there, I'll eat up that there, make sure you have that for them. What will happen? What, what, what is happen? Okay, let me say we hear so. We, we just, we just, by the way, what would happen if the ray of light went straight down the normal? What would happen? It would just continue straight here. So for refraction to take place, that to be at an angle towards the normal, eh? If it go along the normal, the ray of light would just keep going straight. I mean, this ray of light here would slow down still, eh? It would slow, um, it, no, actually it speed up because it's going in air. So it will speed up. So this one will be, this one will have a higher speed. Would it? Would it, Kobe? Would it really? Hmm. Yes, it would. So it will, have, it will speed up. It will speed up because it went from glass to air, but it wouldn't experience any shift in the angle. So let's check out what's going on here with the angle now. If we have a little tiny, little tiny piece of angle here, you ain't know this thing to refract to. Um, and remember, remember when you speeding up is bent away from the normal think of it like this you have this size to fit now you see this size was one meter now when it speed up it have a bigger size to fit but it has to travel so it had to, it had to lean to fit the bigger size now like you see this is two meters it covered two meters right this one only cover one meter so it, it gets tilted you can think of it like that there are other ways i used to think of this like with the car and the side of the road and all happen and but we not time to talk about all them fancy things. I'm not going through any long explanation. We we talking about speed. So it bends, it refracts away from the normal. So this small, this larger. Then when we start to push this thing more this way, refraction is still is still there. You know when we carry it a certain angle of incidence called the critical angle. The thing will refract so much it will, it will make 90 degrees here. So this is the point of no return. Critical angle is the angle of incidence that make an angle of refraction equal to 90 degrees. People say next, we're ready to move on. The bring an uh, airborne out next thing, marry the game, ting, ting, ting. Now, what would happen if if we just move it? So I'll leave in this here. What would happen if we were just to go a smudgeon, a tiny, tiny little bit over this to here so? It wouldn't go like this, you know. It will actually just obey the laws of refraction. Reflection. It will obey the laws of reflection. So that is our next mistake there in like logic for people. Like you think in the this would supposed to just came here now, but no. All of a sudden it started obey obey laws of reflection, where this i is equal to this r. So how how then are we going to get a ray that coming about here? So well then you need to get an incident ray like about here. So. If you get an incident ray about here, so it will go about there, so you understand? So enough on understanding the theory behind that. Critical angle is the angle of 
of incidence that gives an angle of refraction, refraction, reflect, refraction, angle of refraction of 90 degrees. And that's when you're going from a more dense to a less dense medium. And total internal reflection happens when the angle of incidence exceeds that of the critical angle. And then the laws of reflection take place. Um, so where are some uses of angle? Uh, where are some uses of total internal reflection? Where can we use total internal reflection? Now, the, the whole big thing about total in, internal reflection is that um, nothing is lost. What do you think we say the word total for? Everything getting reflected, so you keep inside. So the big the big thing we use it for is in um, certain types of yeah, periscopes and fiber optics. Fiber optics is the one you want to run towards. Fiber optics. Fiber optics. Fiber optics and yeah, in certain types of prisms or maybe in them little reflectors and the road reflectors too, total internet prisms in the tel telescope and stuff like that. We're not going to overdo the talk on that. But fiber optics is the big boys. We want to pull out there. Right, so we done the. Um, I don't think I'll leave out anything. I think we could probably do a question now. Fellas, I listen my question in the chat to do the refraction. Do these fellas thing from from the or. We can talk about the dispersion of white light. That's the last thing to talk about in this topic. Dispersion of white light. And then we're going into lenses. Dispersion of white light. You all give me the spectrum for white light. Write it there. Hopefully somebody write it before. When I see I write it, somebody will write it already. So you have... Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. And we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That songs and thing about that. My son is be singing songs about this right now. So, which one is the faster one? Which one is the slower one? Right? Which one is the faster one? Which one is the slower one? Talk to me. Which one is the fastest and which one is the slowest? By the way, what is the wave equation? Speed is equal to the speed is equal to what? So red is the fastest, violet is the slowest. Violet slow EF. Violet fastest. Violet slow. It's a big fight to see which one is the fastest and which one is least. So speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. Seen some weird things there, but people putting amplitude are, are leaning up more wavelength so they could see it. You know, I'm blocking right now, right? So, which one of these have the highest frequency then? Wave speed. Frequency. Times. Wavelength. Highest frequency. People say in red, violet. Boss, which means half people half are getting it correct and half getting it wrong, half getting it wrong, right? Violet has the shortest wavelength and it is refracted the most. That's correct. Violet has the highest frequency. That's correct. So um 
this has the highest frequency all of them have the same speed so just now when you are seeing which one is the fastest and which one is the slowest all of them travel at the same speed by and large right once in, in a vacuum all of them have the same speed in a vacuum and what is the speed so let me so so chat disconnected am i still am i still live people 3 by 10 to the power of 8 i see you vladimir put that 3 by 10 to the power of 8 so there's no fastest or slowest here Three by ten to the power of eight. Could when was your email? I'm going to put my email here, but a little just only send me good questions if I listen to me. You send me a waste of time thing. Cohen Springer. So I asked some nice questions there, but it poked a lot of discussion at gmail.com. So none of them fast is is fastest. Um, I'm trying to get my chat to, to, to fix back here. Chat, come now, man. Let's be watching this for to know how the people them people in. I'll just give me one minute here to try and fix this chat. Now we pumping a good speed here. Doing 384 people like what I'm watch, watching. Be sure to press. All right, so I did everything in. I did everything in electricity, and everything in magnetism, logic gates, everything. I did everything, so you can check out those lives and you can speed through it and just take all the key points. Cause remember, I will be I was talking in them like. So technically here nobody had no fastest. What are you talking about? So yeah, I press like on the video. Press like on the video, right? So but what happens is violet has the highest frequency, but the shortest wavelength. Right? So normally when they're writing this, the violet is come first because it's like and what is beyond violet? And what is beyond red? So beyond violet, we have ultraviolet. And beyond red, we have infrared, then microwaves, then radio waves, and things like that. Beyond violet, we have ultraviolet, then x-rays and gamma rays. Things like that. Let me just get this whole diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let me just pull it up here so we can just stop all this in case this come. Um, electromagnetic electromagnetic spectrum I'll give me a good diagram here for this come on don't let me down why this diagram had to look like that let's try this again oops oops Right, so let's put this diagram up again. Let's squeeze it up here. So hopefully you can see that. Um, I have to do some sensor in here. Just sensor that there. We have young people in the chat. <laughs> Alright, so we have the radio waves, we have the microwaves, we have infrared, we have the visible section of light. That's what we could see here. All of a sudden we could see some colors out here, people. Then you have ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. So you, you, you need to know this. You don't need to know the actual numbers here. You don't need to know the actual numbers, but you should know the order, and you should know what uses and stuff for infrared uses for ultraviolet. So we'll, we'll retouch that in a bit. Hey, sensor back that again. Um, I'm blocking. Why blocking? I ain't blocking anything big. Day. All right, so cool. So people send me some questions to do. We didn't reach questions time yet. We'll start to pull out the questions just now. So while I was talking about the dispersion of white light, let me just in, insert something here. The dispersion of white light is like this. 
each one will have a slightly different refractive index. Um, I mean, any triangular shape here? No. So I had a, I had to settle with a, a, a funny looking triangle. So this is pure white light I have coming here. Tin beam of pure white, white light. Let me just use one line to represent it. What will happen as it refracts here? Bam. Because I don't remember the normal will be like this. I'm the normal in blue. So it will bend towards the normal, right? It will refract towards the normal. And the one that is want to refract the most is violet. Violet is the one that is going real bad. And you know, when we reach here again, and next set of refraction will take place, because the normal like this. So it will bend away from the normal, so it will open up some more. That is just because of the funny shape of the prism. So in the end, we're going to get an even bigger refraction taking place here. I even bigger dispersion I should use. Dispersion is the word I should use. Taking place here. And is Roy G. Viv going on here. So the red light refracted the least. The violet refracted the most. So the violet has the shortest wavelength. Undergoes the most refraction. We good with that? Let me get some whys in the chat if we good with this. Yeah, the color is separate. This is a prison. This is white light. I think I, I think I touch all the hot button spots there in this. You need to see which one has remember that violet has the shortest wavelength, highest frequency. Ultraviolet, X rays, gamma rays, Hulk. <laughs> right? So high frequencies penetrate. Higher the frequency, the smaller the wavelength, the more dangerous. Penetrate your skin. Um, X-rays, gamma rays. Do, 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 do. So, I think, I think, I think we're ready, day boy. Fellas, I think we're ready for uh, a reflection, a uh, reflection and refraction thing there. The only thing we're missing is lenses. That's the only thing we're missing there, boys. Um... I don't know if this is on your syllabus. I see this in a couple textbooks. Well, I check through the syllabus in depth to know if this is on your syllabus. I've seen something called the scientific method. So, was this? Are you ever hear about that, the scientific method? I'm not telling what Roy G. Dave mean again. Yes, yeah, so we're going to do some pass paper questions now. Just a quick recap of all that we have done. Let me see if I can recap this in two minutes at a time. Bam. We talk about the rays of light, narrow beams of light. This is the proof. Light travels in a straight line. Bam. Ray tracing. This is a technique using optics to trace the path of light using arrows, using straight lines. And you trace it through reflection and trace it through refraction. Um, shadows and eclipse, we talk about what opaque means, two types of shadows, umbra, penumbra, draw diagram, show how to get the umbra and penumbra, you know, crossing to get the penumbra like that, then solar eclipse, annular eclipse, lunar eclipse, talk about two types of eclipse, right, one and two, now, the, the, sol the solar eclipse, this is just a, a style of solar eclipse that can take place if it didn't reach all the way down. Um, then we talk about getting shadows from point source, extended source. Point source, you'll have sharp sh shadows, a big umbra with very small penumbra. With an extended source, you'll have a large penumbra, meaning the shadows are softer, right? And that's better. That's better for like set different settings, right? And then we talk about the pinhole camera. We talk about these types of images. With whether the image, how to cut out, um, talk about image, whether it be virtual or real, magnified same size, upright, laterally inverted, or is the object distance equal to the image distance? Then we talk about reflection, ray box, parallel, diverge, converge, laws of reflection, incident ray, refracted ray, normal on the same plane, angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Drawing this diagram, mirror, whether this whether it's it's uh, diffused, 
or whether it's a perfect reflection taking place or a normal reflection or a diffuse reflection. Um, how to pinpoint an image behind reflection? Image in a plain mirror. The, talking about the image in a plain mirror virtually. Virtual, laterally inverted, upright image distance is equal to object distance is not magnified. Concave mirrors, this is not lens, we didn't reach in lens yet. Concave mirrors, convex mirrors, concave mirror using satellite or in car battery. Um, refraction angle of what is polarization? So I think I had to talk about that when I go into lenses. Uh, refraction, angle of refraction. Refraction and the keyword here is bending of light waves change due to change in medium. Draw the diagram, talk about it. We mentioned this is called lateral displacement. I see that in a past paper already. Laws of refraction, IRN, all on the same plane. Sin I over sin R is equal to N. This is, by the way, this is called Snell's law. And other ways to identify the refractive index. Sin over sin error. Speed of light in, in the first medium over speed of light in the second medium. One over sin C, real depth over apparent depth. Uh, we talk about apparent depth, real depth. We talk about finding the fish. Draw those diagrams. Total internal reflection. We talk about the critical angle. Total internal reflection. Then we talk about the dispersion of white light using a prism. We talk a little bit about the spectrum, which we'll come back and talk a little bit more in the end. I gave you my email <laughs> to send questions, and this is that. So let's do some questions now. Let me see if I get any good questions here. Fellas in the chat, can I find my phone? Oh, I set up my phone here, man. All right, so what I'm doing now is just looking to see if I can spot some good questions. January 2018, C. Somebody talking about peak voltage and thing, and they talking about some weird things in that chat. Um, okay, so January 2018. Let me see if anybody sent my email because if it's on the email, it'll be faster for me to pull across it. So, I'm looking for some questions there, boys. Whoa, 405 people on, on the chat on the live. That's good. So, opening them past people's now. Let's see if I can find some. Um, all you have to tell me the EA and the thing, right? CSEC June papers. No, Jan 2018. So only one, only out of all these 400 people, only one people tell me I pass you per question, right? Jan 2018, one C I. The question ones, the question ones is be so long, boy. Ugh. To do a whole question one here, way. Right? Alright, so I'll just, I'll just guide you through the question. I do this question already. I do this question already, actually, on this channel. I do three full pass papers on this channel already. And I think this was one of them. So I'll show you the style of questions. None of this should come, just for kicks. <laughs> Now a man see in the chat. Injustice what going on with you, boy. Eh? So what happened was they, they had this. You all could see that? We had this. We had that. Then. So this was a full question. This happened in January 2018. For them to bring this back, doubt. I smelling more. I don't know what I'm smelling. I don't know what could come. I'm gonna make no guesses here. But however, this could come later on any paper. Oh, and I see the chat by the way. I just, I just seen a old chat here. Yeah, I guess anything to 
Oops. So then they ask you to complete the table here. So you know to do that, you just take your calculator and find the sign of this, sign of that, sign of this, sign of this, sign, putting them things there. And you, you draw the graph of sine R. The only trick in this one is was sine R against sine I. So it was sine R against I. So if you wanted to find the refractive, it depends on which refractive index you want to find, right? You just need to know whether you're find, finding air to glass or glass to air. And it would be equal to the gradient or 1 over the gradient, depending on which refractive index they want you to find. Um, let me see some wise in the chat if you feel you can handle this question. I'll just show you the next little piece of the question to show you where it went. They asked you to calculate the gradient, then they asked you to explain the term critical angle. And then they show you a fiber optic cable and, and you have to use the critical angle. Use the refractive index to find the critical angle and you know how to do that. You use any formula. N is equal to 1 and sine C. So oh, this was easy. Any other paper? Any other paper had a good question? I wish my chat would load here right now using my chat on my phone and that kind of messing up. Right, good. It load back. Do tomorrow, people. <laughs> June 2013. June 2013. So now you look up June 2013. June 2013. I'm saying June 2013. Which number? June 2013, not number one, because number one was Hooke's Law. Not number two. Number two was that State Snell's Law. Uh, and then they, then they went into lens. And we didn't reach lens yet. So I'll just show you this question. What came in June 2013. And we're going to do lens now and finish off this session. So this session, session hopefully could finish by about 8 to 10 earlier. Oh, no, it had a prison. It had a prison too. So... Pull up this tab, boom, save. Alright, so it had, a, it had a nice piece of question here. Okay, I get to do a question. I get to fight up on a question here for us. So, bam, bam, bam. Oh, I think freeze. Is this one way? This has never occurred before. When that happened, turn off, turn back on, go project, right, be back. So I'll load up this question here, let's take a look at it. Take a little while to find that question. See what they ask you to do here? To state Snell's law, which we already know. Uh, so somebody just write that back in the comments there. Sign I over sign R is equal to N for the same medium. Going from one to the next. In the space below, draw a label diagram using converging lens to show clearly the following features the principal axis. Principal axis. Principal focus. Focal length, focal plane. So we'll come to this just now. We'll come to this just now. We'll go through all the different lenses. Then, so that's food. That part of it was food. And then they asked us to do this, which was not food. Describe the part into a prison and out of a prison when a ray of light is incident 90 degrees as shown. Right angle glass prism as shown there. Did they say to use critical angle for glasses 42? So they give us so can anyone write all this this is kind of long eh? but since the light is moving along the normal it will continue straight here it'll continue straight here 
Okay. And we need to check and see now <sighs> if that's too that's too light. Red. If the angle between here is greater than the critical angle, and very likely it will be greater than the critical angle. So if it's greater than the critical angle, we'd experience we will experience total internal reflection. So it will form So it will it will it will come down and hit this side here. Draw the normal here now. Once again, it will experience total internal reflection and go like this. And the ang the the light will ex will be moving along the normal once again. So it will exit backwards like that. Hello. Anytime, just make sure and call him when you're going to. Yeah, Shagonas. Um, close to presentation college. Yeah, cool. All right, so um, can you all explain this? The only problem was the other make sure and explain this really good since right since this is um. Hey, is somebody say sir? No time for that. That is my wife, boy. We always have time for that, boy. Um, <laughs> he put his finger up to shut us. <laughs> and and when I do so, you know the chat really slow down. It cannot slow down. Okay. Um. So the angle here, since this is ninety, the angle here is forty-five, which will be greater than the critical angle, forty-two. So we will experience total internal reflection. Next, uh, next, we get a lot of next starting to pop up. Now, make sure I explain this good because that was 8 max. Then, you actually need it to state something here. What angle it would turn, would the ray be turned after emerging? Well, if you went this way and you end up going back this way, how much you turn? That's a good question. After emerging, so after it emerges, what angle? Let me see. What angle? Some people say 180. Ay, ay, ay. Some people say 90. Some people say 180. Some people say 360. Some people say 360. Some people say 180. Some people say 90. 180. 360. 180. So what angle the ray turn through after emerging? All right, well let's work it out. We're not going to be at 180s and as a touch of 360 and a sprinkling of 90s. So it going so. Then the ray. This is the ray, right? They're going so. Then it turn. Turn, 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 bam, it end up going so now. So how much it really turn? How much it really turn? You read turn, so it turn 90 and then it turn the next 90 this way. So what's the answer? The answer is 180 degrees. Now for those who think in 360, I understand where you're coming from. But to turn 360, you'll actually have to do so, turn all the way around, and end up going back in the same direction again. So that's how it would have been if it was 360. All right, so the ray just turn around. It turn around, so it turn, it make a full 180. If you're walking this way and then you're walking that way now, you make 180, not 360. If you're walking this way and then you turn all the way around 360, you'll end up walking back in the same direction. Cool. All right. Um, so the calculations in this that you need to be good about is the C, the N, is equal to sine i over sine r. Now it looks kind of simple even when you're watching the question, but the problem is be to identify um which one is the i and which one is the r. 
or whether they took more refractive index from air to glass or from glass to air. So when they done this, make sure and tackle a question on that. Um, somebody else maybe point another question. Somebody else see another question. I could look at the other question probably quickly before I jump into lens and we rack up. <laughs> Feeling kind of cute. Might go to sleep 2 a.m. Okay. You do you, boo. Stanatic. All right. You, you, do, you do you, bro. <laughs> May June 2011 number 4 May June 2011 number 4 Let me see what I'm cooking June 2011 Number 4 Number 4 Hey look at that fish here boy <laughs> Look at that fish And look at the fish question come by a clownfish Nemo, yes, they named the fish Nemo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, now let's see XC by. Never see this question. Denser and rarer medium in, in ref reference to refractive index. Ah, uh, okay, I will explain that just now, okay? Good point, Pussy. I'd have to probably touch on that. Now is the time if Alain understand anything just specifically. You see, how he, you see how the man specifically pull out something there? State the laws of refraction. Ignore that. You know. Whoa! Six max. That's highly suspicious. Alright. Figure 3 shows the clownfish, Nemo, looking at the point B. It sees the fisherman's net appearing as if it were at A. So imagine that now, boy, you come in quite here on this side. And this fish seeing you, although you can't even see the fish yet. you quite here. Imagine like if the bank here, and there's the water. You thought you hiding from the fish, but the fish seeing you, you know, thanks to refraction. So Nemo seeing him, although, but Nemo, to him, to Nemo, you fish a man net up in the air here, so he's seeing that net coming from any distance. Okay, what is the question? The question is calculate the angle C given that angle ABD is 42 degrees. C, by the way, they name it C because this here is the critical angle. So we need to consider this as the, the surface here. So how are we gonna do this one boys? This requires some thinking here. Because we will we give new refractive index on this. Hmm. Calculate the angle C given at the angle ABD. 42. Oh, okay. Alright. Okay. And this is some maths then. So we had. Let me see if I can draw this out here. Everybody with me here? Wow, the number is just green. We have this taking place. We have this is 42 degrees here. should make it a little bigger this is 42 degrees here so they want this angle here well there's a kind of alternate angle sequence happening here the angle is equal to this angle here so people will get you 48 correct so this is 48 48 only because this is the critical angle this is this 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 leaves the like if it was going, if the wave was, if the light was going this way, it would, the angle of refraction would have been 90 degrees here. And this is the critical angle here. All right, so the answer is 48, 90 minus 42. Show it on your diagram. Why you get 48? And then 
given that the angle C is the critical angle for the air water boundary, calculate the refractive index, when you just use the thing, n is equal to 1 over sine C, and you free up yourself. Right? What you get for the what you get for the sine C, sine C is 42, 1 over 1 over no 48, 1 over the sine of 48, and you're good. Why is in the chat? I find that question is really easy for some big amount of marks, boy. Three marks for each thing there. Three marks for taking 90 take, 90 take away. 42, three marks, man. Okay, that's a suspicious thing, is this way? So they get 1.35. Let's see. Then we verify that. Calculator in radians. I'll let make sure the calculator in radians when this happens. Eh? Otherwise, you ain't gonna be happy. 1.35? Yeah, I get that too. I get that too. So we good there. We good. Any other one? Any other paper? Any other paper was gonna have a problem? We had to move on to lens. Before we move on to lens, I could probably snap this and post on Instagram if you ain't do it already. Don't forget to tag me. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. So we can keep in touch now and we can become friends and thing. <laughs> Alright, January 27, number 4. Somebody say move on. I think all you had is done. You know? Feeling like feeling like we good with this. January 2017, number 4. Let me see this question with its salt. This has nothing to do with anything. May, June 2015, question 6. A lot of people balling next. Let's see if I see anything with. Hey, where the rest of this paper? What trouble is this? What other people? May, June. I don't have people. I'm really going on here. I'm missing people. Let's see if I see it. See if I see it. Nah, they're talking about turn down thing. Earlier, we can move on with your life. Now you move on, go some lenses, and maybe we'll touch back. All you should be able to figure out stuff here. We already talked about everything. So lens. Two types of lens. What are the two types of lens? <sighs> By the way, this is a... Concave and convex, what's the difference between these two? This one is a bi convex, this is one is a plano convex. Plano convex, right? Yeah. Plano convex. This one is a bi convex. Um we have the concave. That's kind of ugly. And this is the plano concave. Alright, enough on that. Um, terms, definition for concave, definition for convex lens, convex lens bends the light inwards as it passes through. The light will bend inwards. Concave lens bends the light outwards as it passes through. Now if you back this up, this will be the focal point there. And if you... This is the focal point here. It passes through the focal point there. Um, now we need to go into the whole image formation. So we'll do the we'll do the convex lens first. Let's do the convex lens. Oh, by the way, where's magnification? Before we do this, where's magnification? 
magnification is equal to something over something or equal to next something over next something you get the two for magnification remember do all of electricity and magnetism already eh? Image height over object height, right? Image height over object height. image distance over object distance and some people hunt, want to put the lens formula there was the lens formula all you need to know that Over F is equal to one over U plus one over V. What is U? What is V? What is F? So you just get any formula so out of the way before we go into the dance. What is U? What is F? What is V? One more formula that maybe might show out, but I, I feel it right. So use object distance, V is the image, F is the focal length. Finally, last thing, focal power, 1 over F, I'm not too sure about this one. This is the power of a lens, right? It's equal 1 over the focal length. Right? Um, any other formulas are left out? I think that is it. That is it there, boy. That is it there, people. So just to draw these, draw these million and one diagram now. Now, I don't learn to draw the diagrams. Well, back when I was in, a, in, the, in the earlier days, I didn't learn how to draw the diagram. Let me just get, let me just get something of a focal. Um, convex lens so you're gonna do the diagrams now and a lot of people get problems to memorize the diagrams so hopefully this will work hopefully this will work what I'm trying to do here Diagrams wasn't something that I memorized when we when we speed and through like on a last minute session. What you do is memorize the rules. So the rules look like this. This line I draw here, what is this line called? This line that I'm trying to draw here, what is that line called? That's called the principal axis. Now, if we have a ray of light that runs parallel here, by the way, what is that called? You have to see what that is called, boy. You need to know what that is called. But that is the line where you want to do the um, refraction from it. Think it of another word other than normal. I forget the word. It's not the focal point. Focal plane. Can I remember? Axis of symmetry. Mm -hmm. Me no. Alright, so maybe not. Alright, so any line that parallel will pass through the point like this. So once it parallel, it passes through the point. Once a line run in parallel, it will pass through the point. And the first thing you need to know. Q 
pool pool right so that's one next thing what's the next thing I need to know boy so you have your access day any line that you reverse now If it went through the focal point and it hit the lens, then it will come back out parallel. So that is two. So that is one. If it parallel to the principal axis, goes through the focal point. Wait, bypass it. <laughs> so if it goes through the focal point here, in the beginning, well, then it will come back out parallel. I know they're not looking parallel, but I pretend. And the last thing, whoa, 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 da, 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 is if it goes straight through, it will go straight through, right? So one, two, three. If it goes through the optical center, optical center, it'll pass you undeviated. Right, so once you know these three things in principle, you should be able to draw everything. And there are, there are what? There are one, two, three, four, five situations. What are the five situations? Let me draw the lens and I'll show you the five situations and we'll just explain what happens in each of these situations. Instead of trying to memorize of everything, that's what I said in physics. If you try to memorize everything like chemistry, you end up in problems. It's better to try and understand and to just straight up memorize. All right, so you have a focal point here. Two times the focal point is 2F. Focal length, focal point, focal point, focal length. Two times on that side. These are the situations that you have. Have a situation if the image, I paid like an arrow. Sorry, not the image, the object. What if the object is in front of the focal point? As one situation. Somebody say next. They have this down. You have a next situation if it's on top of the focal point. Excuse me. You have a next situation if it's in between the. This is like the sweet spot here. The focal point and two F. You have a next situation if it's on top 2F, and you have a next situation if it's past 2F. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 situations with the convex lens. Can you write down all of these solutions? Do you know how to explain? Done with nexus here, like now. <laughs> Virtual thing. But can you, do you know how to explain what will happen? What kind of image we'll get from all of these situations. Zip, 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 Yes, sir. No, 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 I can't. Lord have mercy. And waves, I don't. Inverted, bap, we're gonna die. Okay, scary stuff, man. So instead of drawing out all of that, let me see if I can just swipe it from the internet. You know, we operate all around here. Around here. Convex. Lens, re diagrams. Come on, fellas. You know you don't let me down, Google. Come on. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Now, if I could just only get back my program now to open. What them diagrams looking, boy? Them diagrams looking good. Them diagrams looking good for explanation, they boy. I do like. Let me just. Let me see if I get something better to explain with. Otherwise, we gotta work with her. 
boy. Let me make you out. You do bear. Right, this is way better. This is way better. What really going on here, boy? But we get to go there. Oh, they see, I left out one, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six situations. And there, there, there's the other situation, like if you have an image way back at infinity, like at infinity, right? So, okay, let's go through them. So if you have these parallel rays from a distant object, the image is going to be on the focal point. And the sweetest of the sweetest. That is, uh, uh, the object is way far from the lens in terms of in when you compare it to the focal length, it's it's from a, it's very distant to the lens. Copyright strike in three, two, one. <laughs> I don't really um, have anything on these to worry about. Um, type of image. This is what I need to look at. So the image is inverted, is real. All the images will be real except once we come beyond the focal, the first focal point. That's the only virtual one. Well done, Gianna. Um, the image distance is equal to the focal length. It's on the opposite side of the lens. All of them will be on the opposite side of the lens. It's real. The light actually coming and touching here. And you notice we're using the same techniques to draw. This is why I never memorized it per se. I kind of just looked at it. Like if you are pretty good in physics, you just look at all of these, look at all these situations, take it in, maybe even sketch it once, sketch it once. You don't need to watch the other thing, I'm going, and, I'm going and bring it up just now. Sketch it once and then you're using the three concepts, these three concepts here. One, two, three, one, two, three to just bring it back into your memory during the exam, right? But if not, you may have to try and memorize these things or something like that. Okay, what will happen now in the next situation? Let's bring it up a little, a little bit. Now, I got this on Google, so you could just get it on Google too. If the image, this is here, the image is just after 2F, so this is no, not this is one situation one now. It's after two F. Well, you start to draw. Wap, wap, wap. What would happen is that the image will take place between F and two F. Once again, it's inverted. It's real. It's diminished. The image will be smaller, right? Diminish up here too. So the image is diminished diminished right and it's between f and 2f some examples a camera or your eye some examples and the first one was telescope like if you're y'all this image this 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 image here go on google and find the same thing i'm gonna tell you what i search convex lens ray diagram this is the sweetest i see this is better than any textbook because it have it, it have everything in order laid out. And you need to know every single thing on this diagram. Every single thing. So go on Google and pull, you don't I, I will walk through the I'll walk through it, but you could just go on Google and get yourself, right? Um the next situation is if the object is on 2f, two times the focal length, what will happen? Well then the image will happen on 2f. Inverted real but you're getting same size this is the difference because it's on 2f here and this is in photocopiers because you want to make it the same size v is equal to 2f opposite side of the lens this is just this v here stands for the object distance i mean the image distance the image distance is equal to 2f blah 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 let's look at the next three 
very quickly. Mm. Well done, Cohen. Well done. So yeah, hopefully I'll find that image. Let me see some wise if you have this dog or if you could find the image or if you have a good one in your textbook. If you would be able to study this, make true, make it out of this section alive with all your marks. Yeah, the hairline coming back, it's coming back. Don't forget to press like for all 447 of you. Some you still getting some and some people. I don't understand. Some people just have a block with physics, right? right? And if I were, was able to tutor you on a one-on-one -on -one perspective, or if you were able to go through the whole year with two hour classes, right? True. Yeah, that'd be nagay. Anyhow, between 2F and F, the image will form past 2F. So you see what's going on, right? First the image was here, then the image was in between, then the image was on top. Now the image starts to go here, and the image turn magnified now. It's still inverted and real, but it get magnified, and this is using a projector or photograph enlarger. And what would happen if we bring it all the way up, so we keep moving these, we keep sliding the image along, and it's it pretty intuitive to figure out what starts to happen. Eh? The image now on F, bam, you can't even pick up an image it's at infinity. Well, you could pick up an image, but again, parallel beams of light, right? So if you draw something here, you'll get a parallel beam of light running down there. So the image is at infinity. It's upright, virtual, magnified, same side of the lens. The image is on this side now. So from here, the image starting to go. We're starting to see the images on the next side. And this is using a spotlight. If the image distance is less than F, let's just get the last one in. Let's just get the last one inside. And we'll call it George. So yeah, the last one was using a spotlight because you get the parallel nice beams of light. If we if we do the weird thing and pull that object all the way in front of the focal lens, the image is virtual. It's magnified, it's upright, it's on the same side of the lens, behind the object. It's behind the object itself now. And this is using a magnifying glass. So memorize all these things, pick up yourself in that, take take 20 minutes, make sure you have that down cork tonight just in case that pop back up and after that the only thing you need to learn again is this lens formula magnification formula and possibly formula for the power in a lens I think that's it we have come to an end people I went through the eye already when I was talking about biology so if y'all want y'all can skim, see if you can find that with biology. Now let's do a question. So we come into the end here of the live. What time is it? I said we eat it. You should finish. It's 8.25. Sorry, you're doing our next live. All you want me to do our next live? What topic should I do our next live on? I'm going to do some questions now. Radioactivity. Heat. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Some people know, come on. Oh gosh. I need a reply. Right now I'm live on YouTube, so most likely you'll have test tomorrow. I don't even know if you'll have test tomorrow, so. I don't know what to tell you. Moments heat, 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 heat. Y'all, I have done, believe it or not, I have done stuff on radioactivity already. Let me see what happens if I search Cohen Spring Air Physics Radioactivity on YouTube. What will happen? Cohen Springer Radioactivity. Hmm. All right. So physics, January 2018. I didn't do it specific. I didn't do it like a topic. So 
So that might be a little problems there. Yeah, I had to go through the whole paper January 2018, and I ex but when I went through the paper, I, ex I explained. I did three physics papers. I did 2018, I did 2016, and I do a next one, 2017 or something. And during those papers, I explained stuff. So um, I also did all of electricity and magnetism. So I think what next I will do is I will do some heat. Some heat. Some people saying gas, laws and radioactivity. Heat. But I see mostly heat, right? Specific heat capacity. So after I turn off this live, I'll prepare some thermal physics. And we'll deal with that heat there. So don't you dare teach atomic physics tonight. <laughs> thermal physics. <laughs> really going on with these people, boy. Really going on with these students out here, boy. Anyhow, thermal. So people beg for the thermal review. So we're going to do the thermal review. Heat, right? We come in and touch heat afterwards. So heat, that life might start a little late, 9, and we'll try and finish maybe about 10 to 30, 11 for the most. Um. I must apologize to all the integrated science people. I did a lot of integrated science in between, but it's inside the physics, it's inside the chemistry, it's inside the biology, it's inside the geography. So, like watching the integrated science syllabus, I didn't know where to, what to do, what to do. Where is that boss? All right, so let me just do one question. Let me just take a look at one question. Anybody got a question for me on this? Final question for me on... Lens formula. I already did one in January for the 2018 paper. Let's just see if I can find one here quickly. Let's try a January paper. Let's try 2012. Um. Oh, no, speak. Oh, yeah, I bear so. Zip, zip, zip. This people ain't even want to load. Okay, let's try our next thing. I pardon my mess here. Somebody say May, June 2015, question 6. Alright, this paper load, let me see. Let me see. Now they could bring that whole lens formula thing in the first question, eh? So just brace on yourself, now. To be honest, I don't think it should get any problems. The only thing I had to learn off here is the lens diagram. I would draw every one of them if I were you. Draw and label every one of them. Just as a, as a scrap sketch. That would only take 20 minutes and I could save your whole set of marks if that come. I'll let none of my papers on the load right now. We gotta call this quits here. If you wanna see me do a question on lens formula, just look for the past paper. Um, let me just let me just create something then. I'll just create a question here based off of something. Let's create a question. Let's make up a question. Um, let's get a question to make up. Yeah, okay. Oh, remember this, eh? The power of a lens is equal to 1 over the focal length. I think this is measured in diopters or some kind of way, I think so. Um, I really see in anything. Gosh, man, I'll give my question decent here that I can use. Man. Right now, you know what we're doing right now? We're wasting time. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. An object in front of lens where F or the focal length is equal to 12. Um, so this is like a classic question here. Find the uh, nature, meaning talk about what type of image it is, position, 
and magnification of the image so all 441 of you answer this question here of the image when it is when the object is 16 centimeters and B 8 centimeters so you answer answers when object is so when the object is remember the focal length is 12 eh? so what I would do is just make a quick sketch in my, or probably in my mind I'll do this or on the paper F here is 12 so this is F I'd even put in 2F2 because something freaky could happen just in case it's a convex lens right in front of a yeah so it's a converging lens it's a converging lens which means convex converging convex same thing and when the image is 16 16 when the image is 16 is somewhere here because remember 2f is 24 right and now you'll go back to your diagram and see what will happen to, well in your mind what will happen somebody say they can't read the question let me read it over again so you have an object in front of a lens the focal length is 12 finding nature the position and the magnification of the image when the object is at 16 centimeters from the lens or at 8 centimeters from the lens remember these diagrams this is what comes into play here so this is the first one because in between f and 2f right the nature would be inverted real magnified so this image is inverted but they also want the magnification of the image inverted real and magnified and this one the eight centimeters everybody understanding so far so in the 16 centimeters you're using this to help you out it's between 2f and f so the image will be past 2f here it's inverted it's real and magnified and when it's 8 that means it's in front of f and what we know about that virtual right upright virtual magnified right but that's just half of the question right virtual virtual I write in virtual there and magnify the, the hard part in the question now is working out the magnification so you got in nature we didn't really state the position the position the position for this one when it's in front of the focal point it's the images behind the object the position for when it's here the image is past 2 F on the opposite side of the lens the image is past 2 F on the opposite side of the lens right but let me show you the calculation to work out the magnification in case that come let's insert this paper so is remember saying physics is always work out one formula and use our next formula so what you'll do like for the first one for a and remember the focal length is 12 you'll put 1 over 12 is equal to 1 over what's the object distance 16 plus 1 over v this gives v being equal to when you do your whole semi dimmy this gives v being equal to 48 this is the url what is that let's click on this url this person sent me here let me see what's going on Yeah, so somebody just sent a URL. Yeah, so somebody sent a URL with the diagram. Thanks, bro. Matt, yes. Poor Matt was trying to send this for a while now. But Google, only, Google is block links. So if you're watching the comments, Matt, yes, have the link with the diagram. So I'll check it out. So 48. So V is 48. 
Right, so you find V to be 48. You know how to do that now? To get the magnification, magnification is V over U. So the magnification would be 48 over 16, which would be equal to 3. And I think Joel and them boys put out 49 or 48. It's 49 or 48. I get 48 people. I, I, really, I really get 48. I just ripped the answer there. Let me just verify since people want to be all problematic out here. Take away 16. Taking up time here. I want to just, you know. It's 48 by now, 49. So 48 over 16 is equal to 3. I don't know what you're talking about. I get 48, right? So 48 over 16 is equal to 3. This have no units. Magnification are no units. But this have units. So per centimeters here. Whatever they're standing here. This one is using the same is using the same concept. Using the same concept. And you will get three for that one too. You're gonna to use the same concept for that one. For that one. For that one day, one over f is equal to one over u plus one over v. You're using one over twelve is equal to one over eight plus one over v. Rearrange when you take one twelve, take away one eight. That's what you had to do, right? I get V to be negative 24. Right? So the magnification will be negative 24 over 8. Negative 3. Now it's only negative because it's in, the, it's in the reverse direction. So I could just say times 3. Use the positive. Alright. So we, we get that. We see how to use this formula. Most likely if you use this formula, you'll have to use the formula here. And then transport it into the magnification formula here, or vice versa. That's how they'll bring the question. So we're ready to end this live. I will see you back at 9 o'clock for some turmoil physics. Make sure you revise all the other topics in physics. You can take a look at my electricity and magnetism if you haven't done that yet. You can take a look at me running through some past papers if you haven't done that yet. But if you have done all those things, you could go and memorize the, these, the link that this boy put in the chat here. Let me just put, copy back this link. You have a nice URL here. Somebody have past papers here. Raheem just post some past papers or some kind of thing there. Matt, just do this. I'm going to copy this. Always copy this boy, Matt. Boy. Matt, where do you remember? All right, so I'll just copy it like this. Stroop. All right, so I'm going to post the link to the diagram. Where I find this diagram nicer than the textbooks. And I have three textbooks open here. The only textbook that have, have the diagram nicer than this is this textbook. So if you have this textbook and you can learn concepts from this textbook, you know, again. But all the other textbooks for CXC and things not so hot. So I post the link there. You can go and check out that link. Um, and memorize them things. And you mean, well, try and memorize everything that you need to memorize in physics. Remember to learn your Newtonian physics as well. I'm doing that. I'm not doing that. Um, I'll definitely do turmoil. And who knows, I may do something else, but I may not because health, health, I don't watch my health, cold starting to attack me, heart starting to hurt me, chest starting to hurt me, and them kind of thing because I stay up late too much. So, and I don't take energy drinks. So, anyhow, but I don't get enough exercise. Anyhow, all of this is irrelevant. Go and study, go and study.